How Aptera PV Solar Cells is Shattering Barriers to Get Into the Low-Cost Production Market Some concepts can be appealing if physics is not considered. Solar-powered cars, for example, appear to be simple enough. Just mount a few photovoltaic or PV panels on top of an electric vehicle or EV, and presto! The sun provides infinite range. Up until you face reality, electric cars with integrated solar panels look like a brilliant concept. Even after some of the motors failed and light year solar cars went out of production, Aptera still makes wild claims. What is Aptera's solar car's secret? Why did Aptera use solar PV cells with a curve? Does Aptera possess knowledge that we do not? This episode looks at the potential and issues with solar-powered cars, including why they didn't succeed and what Aptera Motors is doing differently to make a difference. Before we proceed, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification icon in order to stay connected. You can support for free by sharing our content to a wider audience. And don't forget to drop your thoughts and opinion in the comments section below. Let's get back to it. Buzzing around in the full light of day sounds appealing. The sun emits enough energy, no doubt about it, but math shows that it's not as useful as it seems. Sona Motors, a Munich-based firm, was forced to shelve plans to manufacture the Cyan, a partially solar-powered automobile, and instead concentrate on producing solar panels for other people's cars. The intention was to develop a long-distance solar-powered vehicle. But in 2019, the project's finances collapsed, and it was declared bankrupt. The company made a comeback but still failed to reach its partially solar-powered vehicle goals. Lightyear, an electric vehicle manufacturer, later revealed that it is discontinuing manufacturing of the Lightyear Zero, a €250,000 or $270,000 USD solar-powered vehicle that the business began producing just three months ago. The setback is part of strategic restructuring, according to the startup, and the business will instead focus on developing the Lightyear 2, which it claims will cost less than $40,000 and go into production in late 2025. However, Aptera Motors appears to have solved the equation and may be able to start mass production soon. There are solar-powered vehicles. The World Solar Challenge, an Australian event held every two years, is the finest sight to witness them. Using solely solar energy, competitors must travel 1,870 miles or 3,000 kilometers from Darwin on the country's north coast to Adelaide on its south coast. A lot of the race cars are not like the cars you see on the road. Instead, they resemble attractions from a theme park or vehicles from science fiction. That explains part of the reason solar-powered vehicles aren't currently a viable alternative for daily transportation. While EV sales are surging worldwide, solar-powered vehicle sales are still stuck in the slow lane, with a mass-market model still looking like a long way off, despite several recent well-publicized attempts. Sono, founded in 2016, began trading on the NASDAQ in November 2023 in an effort to recruit early-stage investors after facing insolvency. It was set to begin manufacturing in Finland with supplier Valmet Automotive in early 2023. Sono Motors' CEOs and co-founders declared in December 2022 that they were unable to raise enough funds to finance Cyan, and they urged supporters to assist continue the project. The company declared in February 2023 that it will stop building the car due to a lack of adequate funding raised through crowdsourcing. Lightyear hopes to restart production plans for its mass-produced solar electric car after declaring bankruptcy shortly after opening pre-orders for the new vehicle. With a solar roof and hood, the Lightyear 2, which is anticipated to cost approximately £35,000, may increase its range to more than 800 kilometers or 500 miles, per charge and require three times as less charging in total than a traditional electric vehicle. Are these startups really burning out because of the arithmetic involved in addressing solar vehicles or is it primarily the cost factor? Let's examine this further. The sun is the nearest thing to an infinite energy source that we have discovered. In less than one hour, it ignites enough energy on Earth to power a year's worth of human electric activity. It can be obtained from anywhere, it doesn't damage our atmosphere, and it won't run out for billions of years. You could be forgiven for believing that this is the ideal way to power our automobiles. Despite this, no company has released a solar-powered vehicle despite investing billions in electrification and hydrogen. It's easy math to figure out why. The amount of electricity that a car-sized solar panel can absorb is limited. Developing a system that is able to harvest enough solar energy can push up costs excessively.
Lightyear, a Dutch startup, appeared to be the most promising, having already begun manufacturing of its Lightyear Zero, a plant in Finland. The car's integrated solar technology can charge whether parked or on the move, thanks to five square meters of double-curved solar arrays on the roof and bonnet that includes 782 IBC, interdigitated back contact, monocrystalline silicon solar cells. The top solar charging speed is 1.05 kilowatts. Unfortunately, the manufacturer of the groundbreaking solar EV was halted only a month later, in January 2023, due to financial issues at the company. Despite this delay, the Netherlands-based company stated that it still plans to introduce the Lightyear 2 solar EV to the mass market in 2025. How is Aptera making a difference? Aptera's shape and design philosophy is assisting it in doing what its predecessors were unable to do at a reasonable cost. Aptera advanced its three-wheeled vehicle architecture with a validation phase aimed at improving aerodynamic performance and efficiency. In collaboration with Pininfarina Wind Tunnel, the solar electric vehicle maker conducted car testing to validate its computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, work and obtain significant insights into the vehicle structure. As a result, Aptera has been able to optimize and fine-tune its solar-powered vehicle to ensure optimal performance and the lowest drag coefficient of any passenger car in production. According to Aptera, the company has obtained favorable wind tunnel data that support its aerodynamic efficiency-focused design philosophy. With the help of Pininfarina's experience, Aptera is working to produce solar-powered vehicles that can be used every day without requiring a few weeks' worth of charge enabling its solar-powered electric vehicles to attain a leading industry range of up to 1,000 miles between charges and the capacity to travel up to 40 miles daily using only solar energy. Aptera's external design is inspired by Professor Morelli's research, the same engineer who created the Pininfarina wind tunnel. By building on Professor Morelli's ideas, Aptera continues to push the boundaries of aerodynamic efficiency, says Alessandro Aquili, head of wind tunnel at Pininfarina. We are always thrilled to participate in the creation of innovative vehicles, especially when they have a strong connection to our wind tunnel's past. Aptera employed AirShaper to examine several automobile design iterations, as well as its AirShaper aerodynamic shape optimization feature, which allowed the algorithm to automatically morph the car toward lower drag values. Pininfarina Wind Tunnel, Italy's first wind tunnel designed for full-scale automotive testing, was opened in 1972. Since then, it has served as a tool for automobile makers to attain high levels of vehicle performance, energy consumption, and overall comfort through aerodynamic and aeroacoustics testing and validation. Solar panels are an essential component of Aptera's revolutionary design and environmentally friendly driving experience. The startup deliberately designed its solar panels to be strong, resilient, and able to survive harsh environmental conditions. Aptera's solar panels are engineered to continue to generate power even if one of the solar cells cracks or breaks. A severely damaged solar panel can be replaced quickly and easily, just like a windshield. Aptera's solar electric vehicle, outfitted with nearly 700 watts of PV cells, can travel up to 40 miles, that is about 64 kilometers, on solar alone or 1,000 miles on batteries. Aptera is partnering with Maxim Solar Technologies as a cell supplier for its solar production program, and the carmaker's solar engineers have used the cells to construct ultra-lightweight curved panels. Aptera used Maxim Gen 3 solar cells for their durability, lightweight, and low energy loss, assisting Aptera in capturing more of the sun's energy while keeping costs down. Following standard solar designs, it will be too expensive to catch a substantial amount of energy, given the different factors that influence the rate of solar energy captured by a PV cell. The amount of sunlight a photovoltaic cell can convert to energy is a measure of its efficiency. Currently, the most efficient PV cells have efficiencies of about 25%. Even so, scientists are still striving to create cells that are even more effective. The most recent perovskite cells are producing levels that are about 30%. Perovskite solar cells have shown even better efficiency in silicon single crystal cells and are less expensive to produce, although they currently have a number of drawbacks, such as a short lifespan. Perovskite is the mineral compound calcium titanate, which has a distinctive crystal structure, whereas perovskites are a group of materials named after it because they share the same crystal structure. That structure can retain a wide range of positively charged cations from various elements, allowing the creation of tailored materials that can respond to different wavelengths of light. 
This makes them appropriate for use in tandem device architectures. Perovskite on silicon, for example, has sparked a lot of attention due to total conversion efficiencies of over 30% demonstrated thus far. The real world isn't often so sunny, either. Merely 55% of the energy that the Earth receives reaches the ground due to reflection and absorption by the atmosphere. Furthermore, that is limited to daytime hours. Only at local noon is peak energy accessible. In the morning and evening, off-angle sunlight limits your ability to capture power. However, unlike conventional cells, the curved custom-designed PV cells for Aptera are able to capture energy from curving angels. So, how do photovoltaics work? PV cells, also called solar cells, convert sunlight directly into energy. Most commercially available cells are built of semiconductor materials like silicon, which have distinct electrical properties. When a photon of light strikes a PV cell, it can excite an electron, causing it to jump from a lower to a higher energy level, resulting in an electric current that can power electronic devices. In 1839, French scientist Alexander Edmond Becquerel made the initial discovery of the photovoltaic phenomenon. Nevertheless, the first useful PV cells weren't created until the 1950s. At Bell Laboratories, Gerald Pearson, Calvin Fuller, and Daryl Chapman created a silicon photovoltaic cell in 1954 that had a 6% efficiency. The first solar panels were created as a result of this discovery and were initially used to power spacecraft in the late 1950s. As Aptera gears up to take the solar car lead, an Aptera car can go 40 miles per day on just the 700 watts of power from its solar panels, thanks to its three-wheeled layout, low rolling resistance, and a drag coefficient of just 0.13. Its weight is also claimed to be 65% less than that of standard modern EVs. The car's stated range is 1,000 miles when the battery is fully charged. And that concludes this chapter. You can support for free by sharing our content to a wider audience and don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, kindly remember to like, subscribe, share, and turn on the bell notification icon in order to stay connected. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.